All right, so here's today's second video uh, about why they need to separate the autism spectrum diagnosis in the DSM. I've alluded to this a couple times in recent videos. I did one recently, The History of the Autism Spectrum, and I did one recently called There Really is an Increase in Autism, where I talked about the DSM, neurodiversity movement, stuff like that. So some of this is repetitive, but it bears repeating. I have to learn how to link my previous videos and my current videos, because I have like 70 videos, so no one's looking through my old videos. And that'll help me with viewership too, if I can fit, I'll teach myself how to do that, I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll be able to do it. Uh, but for now, um, those videos are fairly recent if you want to look for them. One's called, There Really Is an Increase in Autism, and um, one's called The History of Autism. So the DSM, DSM stands for Diagnostic and Statistic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Uh, they call it the Psychiatrist's Bible in North America. Other places have a different system, usually the IDC, International Disease Classification, uh, which includes both mental and physical things. That's used in most countries. In North America, they use the DSM to diagnose mental conditions of all sorts. Uh, mental illness, developmental problems, dementia is in there, any mental condition. So I went over my previous video, the history of uh, autism in the DSM. So I won't rehash the entire thing. Uh, but what you need to know to make sense of this video is in the 90s and until 2013, autism had subtypes or, you know, it was a category. The terminology moved around a bit. But it was always like an overarching category of autism with different diagnoses within it. Or here's autism, here are the subtypes. There was always something like that. It was separated. Asperger's, severe autism, PDD, and OS uh, were three distinct diagnoses. Uh, they were considered related to each other. They were considered similar in some ways. Uh, they were hoping in the 90s with the Human Genome Project to find genes for each of these disorders, which did not work out. Uh, and some people don't agree that they're actually even related conditions. It's hard with brains because they, you know, you can't just look in there and see what's happening. But the understanding was always, regardless, that Asperger's and severe autism are separate diagnoses. In the DSM-5 uh, that came out in 2013, the newest one, they collapsed the whole thing into autism spectrum disorder. No more categories, subtypes, blah, blah, blah. It was just all one diagnosis, autism spectrum disorder, levels 1, 2, and 3, mild, moderate, severe. So you are saying that someone like me, who was capable, if I didn't have so much anxiety and other issues, I would be capable of, you know, attaining a university education. So you're saying someone like me, uh, who can live independently, who can communicate verbally or otherwise, um, it's the same as someone who has severe intellectual disability, uh, wears diapers, because people on the most severe end of the spectrum, that's reality. There are nonverbal individuals who do not have intellectual disability, which I'll address in a moment. But the severe end of the spectrum, these individuals have intellectual disability, um, little or no communication, can't advocate for themselves, need 24-hour supervision, you know, never mind living alone and holding down a job. Uh, it's very, very different. And to say that me and that person have a mild and severe type of or presentation of the same diagnosis is absolutely absurd. Related, sure, call it that if you want. It's to get in one category, whatever. They need to be separate diagnoses. And the reason I've become so strongly convicted of this, and I've talked about this in, in other videos, but the, the big thing is the neurodiversity movement, and that always bears repeating. You will hear things like, uh, there's no such thing as severe autism, all autism is the same. These people believe that what they know and what they experience is the same as everybody else on the autism spectrum. And I don't know how aware some of these people even are of the severe end. So they will say that what they need and what works for them is the same. There's no such thing as severe autism, all autism is the same. And these people who have disability the cognitive ability to go online and say these things or to advocate in real life don't represent everyone. 
the high functioning end of the spectrum is overrepresented and the needs of others is underrepresented and I'm learning that this mentality is starting to spread into real life because these neurodiversity people they want society to change I used the analogy before that if little people said everything should be built lower because some people have dwarfism that would be absurd well that's basically what these neurodiversity people are doing they want all of society to change because according to them autism is not disabling society makes it disabling and they include all of the spectrum in in this rhetoric and they're starting to advocate for like in, everything is inclusion everything is forget special settings forget special accommodations People with autism, all forms of autism, everyone with autism can do everything everyone else can The society lets them. This is absurd. I don't even like these words coming out of my mouth. Maybe because I've witnessed severe autism, you know, firsthand and would never even, you know, think of saying that I know what that person experiences. Uh, maybe my own experience helps with this, but it's absurd. It is absolutely absurd. It is spreading into real life. These people are advocating in real life. Changes are being made that leave out the severe end of the spectrum. And part of the solution, I think, at least part of the solution, would be to separate it back out. Put those people under the Asperger's label. Let them say whatever crazy things they want about Asperger's. You know, I'd rather they didn't. But at least then they're not harming people who can't speak or advocate for themselves. Uh, so I did mention a minute ago that there are people who are nonverbal, who do not have intellectual disability. A, a famous individual is Carly Fleischman. She has autism and she also has apraxia, oral motor apraxia. So she is unable to control her mouth properly to form words, basically. So she is nonverbal because of that condition, as opposed to the autism itself or uh, having intellectual disability. It's the combination of autism and intellectual disability. Um, so for her, she doesn't have that combination. She has autism and apraxia, and she's able to communicate quite well with an iPad, and she's far from the only one. So you will hear people in the neurodiversity community point to someone like her and say, you know, she's nonverbal and she can still contribute, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. But she's a different profile again. She doesn't represent these severest, most disabled people. This is some of the most extreme behavior you will see in any, you know, mental condition, neuropsychiatric disorder, whatever word you want to use. And these people want to say, oh, it's not a disorder. Oh, society needs to accommodate them. They don't need special settings. Uh, you know, they don't need to do this, that, or the other. Their parents are wrong. Here's what they need. So separate it out. I'll say it a million times. Put those people under Asperger's. At least, I think that would at least help get them away from the severe end. Uh, where they're potentially causing harm if they haven't already caused harm in real life. I know they've caused harm to parents through bullying, through accusing them of hating their children, abusing their children. They have answers for everything, though. Some of these, like the hardcore ones, if you show them a video of severe autism, they will say they're traumatized, they're abused, they're being triggered. Parents are told they hate their kids, they want their kids dead. If you don't celebrate autism, say it's a good thing, and use the exact correct language they want you to use and agree that everything would be wonderful if society just, just you know, changed instead of any of these other accommodations or treatments. No, you can't say any of that. You have to agree with them or you're wrong. And this needs to stop. And to me, this is at least the first step. Um, I could go on all day. I'm on a soapbox here. Uh, so I'll end there and I'll be following with uh, one more new video. Thank you.